Hey guys, another video clip here with Guardian Safe Alarm. Today we are dealing with panic lock. So essentially, whenever the customer used the key, whether he locked it or unlocked it, the key wouldn't fully engage the panic bar, and he's worried of uh, someone coming in, prying the door open, gaining access into their expensive equipment. So uh, basically, there's two screws right here for the case of the panic bar. We're gonna remove those and get started. <clears throat> Alrighty guys, so what we're installing on this door is a panic bar or crash bar. It's just to get the regulation on. It's an N99000 series exit device made by Marks. We put this on tons of doors. It's a great panic bar. Alright, so we have two screws that basically hold on to the uh, exterior lever. So remove one, remove the other, and the panic bar should come off. <clears throat> like so. Careful with this part. It's just hold on by a self tapper case. Only able to remove the exterior trim, which is failing. Just like that, off with the old, and soon to be in with the new. Alrighty guys, so one of the things that this door is lacking is post holes for our new lever. <clears throat> Essentially this Falcon lever has two posts, and obviously the door is missing the holes for it. So we have to drill them out using this fancy jig from Schlage or Legion. line it up pull out the hole like so and we'll repeat the process on the other side Holds are all the way through, flush, and we're ready to install. Our next step is mounting the exit trim or the exterior trim of the panic bar to the door so that everything is held on firmly. And then we can mount the panic bar to the trim so that everything actuates just fine. Gotta make sure you don't tighten it too much or else it'll bind on you. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is actually mount the panel bar onto the door to the post on the exterior trim portion of the door. So these are the two post holes that we're screwing these two screws into. We 
got to make sure that this post right here, it's a cross post, fits into the cross right here. Or else the pen bar will not function properly. All right, screws go on like so. Careful not to tighten the screws. We have it actually leveled the panic bar just yet. So that's the next step. It's making sure everything's flush against the door so that there's no binding issues once the insulation is done. What I recommend for any installation in terms of installing hardware is a magnetic level. Makes it easier, won't fall off the door. And it's about right. So the last thing that we need to do is install the end cap, which will basically make sure the panic bar on this side stays flush and attached to the door because obviously you can see without it, it's gonna be banging on the door. So the next thing I'm gonna do is install the cover plate for a latch. If this was a lever trim, or just a regular cylindrical lever, like levers on both sides of the door, there'd be a latch right here. But since we're not utilizing that, we're gonna put this cover plate on there. Like so. The next thing that I'm doing is marking the holes for the self tappers that are going to go into the, uh, the door frame or the door itself. So make sure everything's flush with the level. Like so. Mark the holes. Time to screw on the end cap that goes on the end of the panic bar. Like so. Alright. Last thing to mount is the actual panic bar head. It just covers all the uh, Parts of the site of the panic bar. Last and final screw. This seems to be working fine. Let's move the side eye there. Let's test the keys that came with the panic bar. Make sure everything works just fine. 
kind of tracks the latch pretty well. Go ahead. Last thing we have to do is replace the strike plate. That's right here. Basically, it allows the latch to fall into place with the dead latch kicked back so that no one can pry the door. So this is what's falling into place right here. And this is the dead latch that's going to prevent the, the latch from going back. So it protects it from, from pry it out. Latch. I'm just gonna toss it in here. New latch for installing. Has a much smaller profile and it has a little rolling pin. Alrighty, guys. So we mounted the uh, strike plate to the door. Should fall in just right. I'm gonna see if the door latches properly which there's no play in the door. We don't see the sunlight at all, except that the bottom of the door switch can fix that. So here's where the dead latch and the latch fall. The dead latch needs to go on this little mound right here. And the latch itself needs to fall on this little crevice. Basically prevents someone from prying out of the latch and pulling it back. As you can see, doesn't give because the dead latch is activated. The door opens just fine. <clears throat> Alright guys, so one of the features that uh, most panic bars come with is a dog down feature. So you see this little hole right here? Basically, basically allows the hex tool or hex key to be inserted in there. And they come in various sizes depending on the model of the panic bar. So it allows free egress, or it allows the panic bar to be unlocked for people that don't have a key to it. So basically, you push down the crash bar portion, hold it down, stick the hex tool in there, and turn it clockwise. And it keeps it recessed, and it allows the latch to fall in. So to unlock it, you basically reverse the process, hold on, press into the uh, crash bar, Turn it counterclockwise and it frees it and it sends, shoots out the latch. And that's it. Alrighty guys, we're all done with the panic bar installation. Last thing I ask of you is to hit like or subscribe to our YouTube page and tap the bell icon for notifications. Also follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, all of our social media to get following updates for our next video or anything that's going on with us. Thank you.